Hey everyone, my name is Nick Sulo. I'm an artist with a background in visual effects, working for the film and TV industry for the past decade. I'm also the co-creator of Exulo, that's known for creating the techno dystopia surreal artworks. In this video today, I want to show you guys how to create a cyberpunk character. We're going to use different 3D assets in Maya and then do 2D approaches in both Photoshop and Clip Studio. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right in. So whenever I start these illustrations, I always jump into Daz first uh, to create the characters and their facial expressions and their overall mood and feel that I kind of want to convey at the final image. So this is kind of the, the groundwork. So I kind of start setting things up. Then the next thing I do is just drop a camera in there to kind of position it uh, how I want the final image to kind of look and be framed. So yeah, we kind of got this screaming dude not much really kind of going on at this stage and point of the um, artwork. So we're going to go ahead now that I feel like this is in a good spot. We're going to drop this in Maya and start lighting it and just giving it some color. Now that we're in Maya, uh, I have the camera set up here. Um, we're going to probably have to adjust the camera on the go as we introduce new assets to the character to build on top of the kind of a VR cyberpunk aesthetics. So before I actually bring in those assets, um, I like to adjust the focal length uh, to more of a portrait view. You can kind of see the focal length right now is at 30. So it tends to be a little more of an extreme angle. So I tend to like to adjust it prior between 70 and 80. So we'll go ahead and adjust it to 80. You will kind of see that um, it's already kind of frames the, the face a lot better. Our eye kind of goes to it. It just feels a lot more balanced and has a stronger composition like that. So the next thing I did was bring in this kit and just starting to kind of build up some cylinder shapes in this. And what I will eventually do is place it on his eyes, kind of these goggles, which is kind of a fun way to kind of get that sci-fi cyberpunk feel already going with the image. So the next thing I'll do is I'll start introducing some other shapes to it to kind of start framing his face, uh, make something interesting and a bit of like a mohawk sci-fi feel to that, which is really kind of a fun thing. I'll bring in other different smaller pieces in just to kind of help tie everything together nicely. Now that we kind of roughly placed in these objects in and around his face, we can kind of fine tune them and kind of make the composition and the overall aesthetics a little more appealing. Maybe bring these out and scrunch them down a little bit. Might be kind of fun to pull up the mohawk some more. I just make it feel a little more dynamic. Be kind of fun right there. Maybe take this cylinder you do something interesting with it. You cover that earlobe because it's a little, to me, a little bit distracting. You just kind of, it's a bit of experimenting here. It's all just about having fun. Start getting these interesting shapes here. It's already starting to look to me a little bit better. Even move these pieces down and over on his face. They cover it on his cheeks. Might be kind of fun thing to do there. At this point in the stage, it's all about kind of being loose and just kind of having fun and just kind of building things up so that I can kind of wander and go around. It's all about kind of creating these fun shapes. It kind of goes to contour his face. It's always kind of a nice thing to tad. So I went ahead and just started adding in a few cables uh, to the headset, uh, just something to fill the frame up so the composition doesn't feel too empty. 
Um, so now that these are in place, you can just go ahead and start lighting it and adding in some color as well. So go ahead and drop in a fill light and then as well as a key light. And this will help kind of frame and shape the image with lighting. And then the next thing we can do is just start adding in color. Kind of a nice colors to go with are like primary and secondary colors, the blues and pinks for like the skin tone. Start adding in color into the goggles and then start filling in color with like the clothing, the jacket, and then uh, the buttons as well. It's kind of a nice balance with color. And then fill in the background as well with a, just a off black color. And what's kind of nice is you can even pump up the uh, fill light and the key light, kind of have a hot green and blue colors. It just adds a lot more to it. Now that we've added in the lighting and the color, we can go ahead and do some 3D kind of post effects. Uh, what I tend to like to do is add in some lens effects, which enables kind of this bloom and glare effect to happen. And for tutorial purposes, I'll just kind of pump it up so you can really see what's going on here. So it's kind of neat about this effect. You get these nice streak glow effects nice bloom around the lighting source of the goggles. And this just kind of really makes the image have like an overall kind of a pop feel to it. And what's kind of neat about this is rather if you want to, if you don't want these bloom streak effects, you can actually adjust it kind of more of a glow, like a hazy glow to the image, which is really neat too. Going back to point four, you can even adjust the rotation of these um, and how you know these are going to be affected. And then there's lens scratches, which like really pumps up and adds in these different hexagonal shapes. Like you can kind of see here. Let's bring down. But yeah, it's it's a pretty cool effect. And even add in stripe effect, square. Just really play around with the shapes and sizes of these bloom effects. So for this one, we'll, we'll just go ahead and turn off like the lens scratches. Just something kind of a default basic bloom effect. Nothing too crazy, too heavy. And then uh, before I take it into Photoshop, I make sure I have different render passes, like the denoiser cuts out any kind of noise in the 3D render, kind of starts off with a nice clean um, image. And then we have a diffuse pass. This can be great for masking. The diffuse and um, render ID are great for, for masking uh, in Photoshop and adding in and focusing on certain specific parts of the image that you want to. Then you got your ambient occlusion, global illumination, and all these passes kind of you can really play around with in Photoshop to add a little bit more to the image. Lighting pass, got normal pass, reflection, refraction, and then the subsurface scattering, which is skin texture pass spec. And then I also like to add in uh, the tune shader. And this is kind of a basic um, starting board of where I want the illustration to kind of start going. And in Photoshop, we can start adding in all the details on top of the illustration rather than just purely using the tune shader just to bring in some more illustrative aspects to it. Kind of makes it a little more personalized. So yeah, now that we're in this spot, we can go ahead and drop this in Photoshop and start illustrating on top. So actually, before we jump into the illustration part, I brought the render passes into Photoshop to composite together. We're going to go ahead and layer the passes like the tune shader for line work, the ambient occlusion, reflection, spec, and so on, uh, using the different blending modes like screen, lighten, or overlay to bring it all together. So as I mentioned, this will help bring in some of the nice extra details into the artwork so it doesn't feel so flat and just a little more dynamic, which is great in the end. And then what I'm also going to do is use that render ID pass to mask and color correct some of the elements like the jacket and the headgear just to add that final nice touch of detail in there. 
So yeah, at this point, we'll just go ahead and start on the final illustration in um, Clip Studio. Now that we're in Clip Studio, I want to first start off by adding in hair details. So rather than having the bald mannequin look, I'll add in hair to give the characters more personality. So at first, I was thinking we could go with long, wavy hair, but I feel like this would take away from the whole shape and form that the VR headset kind of gives. So we'll go ahead and uh, give the character a short buzz cut, which feels more suitable for this artwork. And what's fun about this process is, is I can really get creative with the details by adding in nuanced line work over the 3D render. So adding in imperfections to the character's skin and scratched metal to the VR headset, uh, this is going to really help and push the artwork even further. Give that human touch that I just couldn't get straight from the 3D render. So we can go ahead and add in some also some sticker details, um, with color, filling them in with color, adding in any other like final touch ups uh, at this point. So I went ahead and finished up the artwork for this piece. So let's go ahead and we can compare like a before and after of the 3D render and then what I did in Photoshop and Clip Studio. So yeah, this is the raw 3D render from Maya with the V-Ray tune shader on top. So already you can kind of see there's a lot of post work done to it, some color corrections obviously, and a ton of paint work, you know, the added hair, all these uh, post 2D paint overs really do kind of drive it home and add a lot of style to the character. So I didn't really want to spend too much time in 3D and I want to really kind of add in everything in post. So adding in all the stickers, the band-aids on the necks, the details in the buttons, a lot of fun stuff, even cutting up the shirt a bit. And then obviously the, um, the spillage uh, coming out of the VR goggles. It just adds a lot of personality to the character. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video on how to create a cyberpunk character using the 3D assets and 2D approaches. Um, keep an eye out, there's going to be more videos to come here on the Video Studio. So take care and uh, see you then.